Today is Wednesday of the 13th week in Ordinary Time. First reading. Genesis chapter 21 verses 5, 8 to 20. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Isaac grew, and on the day of the child's weaning Abraham held a great feast. Sarah noticed the son whom Hagar the Egyptian had born to Abraham playing with her son Isaac, so she demanded of Abraham, drive out that slave and her son. No son of that slave is going to share the inheritance with my son Isaac. Abraham was greatly distressed, especially on account of his son Ishmael. But God said to Abraham, Do not be distressed about the boy or about your slave woman. Heed the demands of Sarah, no matter what she is asking of you, for it is through Isaac that descendants shall bear your name. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a great nation of him also, since he too is your offspring. Early the next morning Abraham got some bread and a skin of water and gave them to Hagar. Then, placing the child on her back, he sent her away. As she roamed aimlessly in the wilderness of Beersheba, the water in the skin was used up. So she put the child down under a shrub, and then went and sat down opposite him, about a bowshot away, for she said to herself, Let me not watch to see the child die. As she sat opposite Ishmael, he began to cry. God heard the boy's cry, and God's messenger called to Hagar from heaven, What is the matter, Hagar? Don't be afraid, God has heard the boy's cry in this plight of his. Arise, lift up the boy and hold him by the hand, for I will make of him a great nation. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. She went in and filled the skin with water, and then let the boy drink. God was with the boy as he grew up. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm The Lord Hears the Cry of the Poor when the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress he saved him. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and delivers them. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Fear the Lord, you his holy ones, for naught is lacking to those who fear him. The great grow poor and hungry, but those who seek the Lord want for no good thing. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Come, children, hear me, I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Which of you desires life, and takes delight in prosperous days? The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Gospel Reading Matthew Chapter 8, Verses 28-34 when Jesus came to the territory of the Gadarenes, two demoniacs who were coming from the tombs met him. They were so savage that no one could travel by that road. They cried out, What have you to do with us, Son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the appointed time? Some distance away a herd of many swine was feeding. The demons pleaded with him, If you drive us out, send us into the herd of swine. And he said to them, Go then. They came out and entered the swine, and the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea where they drowned. The swineherds ran away, and when they came to the town they reported everything, including what had happened to the demoniacs. Thereupon the whole town came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him they begged him to leave their district. The Gospel of the Lord The Signs of the Kingdom of God. From the Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraphs 547 to 550. Jesus accompanies his words with many mighty works and wonders and signs, which manifest that the kingdom is present in him and attest that he was the promised Messiah. The signs worked by Jesus attest that the Father has sent him. They invite belief in him. To those who turn to him in faith, he grants what they ask. So miracles strengthen faith in the one who does his Father's works, they bear witness that he is the Son of God. But his miracles can also be occasions for offense, they are not intended to satisfy people's curiosity or desire for magic despite his evident miracles some people reject Jesus, he is even accused of acting by the power of demons. By freeing some individuals from the earthly evils of hunger, injustice, illness, and death, Jesus performed messianic signs. 
Nevertheless, he did not come to abolish all evils here below, but to free men from the gravest slavery, sin, which thwarts them in their vocation as God's sons and causes all forms of human bondage. The coming of God's kingdom means the defeat of Satan's. If it is by the Spirit of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Jesus' exorcisms free some individuals from the domination of demons. They anticipate Jesus' great victory over the ruler of this world. The kingdom of God will be definitively established through Christ's cross, God reigned from the wood.